And now, back to the Gary Bowden Show on the AJR News Network. Governor Justice has described the agriculture industry in West Virginia as an $800 million sleeping giant. And we're going to talk about that with West Virginia's Commissioner of Agriculture, Kent Leonard. And we thank you, uh, uh, Kent. And I do know your name. Sometimes my mouth works a little faster than my brain. Welcome. Oh, glad to be here, I th- Gary. I think going into the break, I said uh, Ken, but it just kind of slipped out. Uh, $800 million sleeping giant. Uh, that's, a, uh, that's, that's a difficult uh, banner to have to carry. Uh, do you agree with the governor? Well, I agree with the governor on that. We do have... You know, what we used to call in the Marine Corps a target-rich environment. I sure. Mean, we have so many opportunities here in the state to grow agriculture. And it doesn't. And growing agriculture not only helps our economy, but if we do this right, and I'm working with some initiatives with WVU and WVU Medicine, if we do this right, we can actually improve the health of our citizens, saving taxpayer money down the road in the uh, health care world. Mm-hmm. And would this include not only uh, growing and building uh, our crop supply to serve West Virginia, but other markets as well in other states? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I mean, there's some burgeoning, uh, you know, we have a big difference in the state, I mean, from what we eat and what we grow. So that, that gap uh, is economic development uh, when we fill that gap in. But we're also, I mean, most people don't know, we've started shipping uh, maple sugar to china oh goodness okay so we have the opportunity to and some of our chicken parts go to go to uh, foreign countries as well so west virginia is a member of the southern u.s trade association Mm -hmm. and that association helps find uh, markets outside the state of west virginia uh, and uh, overseas for our products so as we can develop some of these niche markets and that's what you know. That's where we're really going to shine is some of the niche markets. We can't do the row crops, right? Like, uh, you know, potatoes and corn and things of that nature. Well, we don't we have the land locally, mass. But, is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, things are done the way they are for a reason. But with the new technologies, hydroponics, high tunnels, now we can certainly get into the uh, niche markets, the coal mm-hmm. mine, the coal fields, uh, and mines possibly for mushrooms. Uh, there's people using the forest tops of oak trees to grow shiitake mushrooms and shipping them to New Jersey. We've got a farmer that has been an entrepreneur that is now shipping GMO-free uh, duck eggs around the country. So we can certainly uh, compete uh, with other markets. We just have to develop those markets. Mm-hmm. We're talking with Kent Leonard, the West Virginia Commissioner of Agriculture. Uh, what are some of the things then that we need to do to expand in these niche markets to develop these niche opportunities well first of all you know our new business agricultural business development director which is in keeping with the marketing requirements of the department of agriculture constitutionally and statutorily uh they're going to be looking for those markets they're going to be developing the models uh that we can use when we find something that works we're going to try to cookie cutter those and copy it around the state. If we can get a local uh, community supported agriculture doing uh, pharmacies, I, and I spell it F A R M I C I E S, where we're gaining new health through nutrition, vice mm-hmm. uh, narcotics or drugs, uh, and that's a that's a market. If we get something working well up in the Wheeling area, and then we can uh, copy that and put it in other areas of the state. Mm-hmm. So as we develop these models. Uh, when we bring the parties together that are trying, there's a lot of great groups out trying a lot of things around the state. My goal with this department is to uh, bring everybody together, find out what's working, find out what's succeeded, what hasn't worked, so we don't duplicate errors and we copy successes. Mm -hmm. This is a bit of a personal question because we're talking about niche markets and uh, production that people might know about. At one time, and it's been a few years, I believe we were raising fish, Arctic char, in ponds in old abandoned mines. Is that still going on? I believe it is. Okay. Uh, there's some trout farms that are doing are being pretty successful, and I talked to one person who uh, dabbled in it just recently, and they sold every trout they could get. Okay. 
so there's those markets are there too. A West Virginia historian said that at one time we had ginseng millionaires in the state of West Virginia. Uh, how did that go away, or has it gone away? Well, it's got, it's got, it's not totally gone away. Okay. It's still available, and there's actually ginseng planting projects available through the Natural Resource Conservation Services, uh, USDA. Uh, but the problem we have here now is that we've got four-legged critters called deer that are more populous, and they seem to eat the ginseng right. in the forest. So it's it's made it a little bit more difficult. So have we developed a bigger market, or can we, for venison? Uh, we're actually developing a bigger market for venison. I, okay. Uh, we're, our deer farming has moved to the Department of Agriculture, which just only from the DNR, which only made sense because we had the veterinarian sure. uh, to make sure that the, the, the meat is uh, going to be raised safe. And we actually have a slaughter of venison going on in West Virginia right now. That's happened since I've took, taken office. We've arranged that, and they're actually uh, shipping uh, deer in from other states, uh, deer farms from other states to do the slaughter. So I think that's a great economic activity for us. Commissioner, what about technology? How does that play into growing the agricultural opportunity? Well, that plays a that plays a huge uh, thing. We have the natural gas. We should be doing, and you know, those imported tomatoes that are kind of mushy and uh-huh. they're not mushy, but uh, hard and they're not real red. They're not like grandma's tomatoes out of the garden. No. Uh, those I, are, I those tell are people all the time that the, yeah, I, I tell people, country, good, yeah, forty percent of that is natural gas. Okay. So we should, you know, with our natural gas resources, we should be developing those industries. And we're actually working on some of those projects right well, now. I, I ask my wife sometimes, I said, am, am I wrong or d- did not oranges and apples and, and bananas and other fruits back when, when we were younger have taste? Because it seems like what I buy today is lacking. Well, that's absolutely true. But you got to remember, too, when it had taste, you didn't get tomatoes in January. Yeah. You were eating seasonally. Yeah. I grew up eating seasonally. We had canned tomatoes in January. Mm-hmm. But now the, the market demands tomatoes 24-7, 365 days a year. And so other places have used that technology to get them into your local grocer. Why do we, ha- why do we go to Canada and pick up vegetables in the middle of winter and mm-hmm. bring them into West Virginia? Mm-hmm. We should be growing those right here. That was one of my questions. Is can we grow in winter months here? Obviously, this past winter was pretty, uh, pretty mild. Well, actually, if you're in a controlled environment, such as a hydroponic plant, uh, we don't care about the weather. Sure. Uh, and now that's going to be kind, that's going to be a, a market of, you know, kind of single type crop. It's not going to be like your family vegetable garden, which is a smorgasbord of vegetables, and you, you pick what's ready that day and eat. But the other challenge that we have is with using the new technologies in the high tunnels and growing, you know, like, it, like any garden, everything comes to market at once uh-huh. sometimes. What we have to do is we have to have people out there that can plan and understand this. Okay, this grocery store needs so many tons of uh, pounds of tomatoes, so many pounds of green beans, so many, or this school even, in the farm to school program, they need so many a week. So somebody has to plan, say, okay, farmer A, you plant this, this much this time because we know you'll produce this much. Farmer B, you promote, promote this time. You know, C, you plant this time so that the schools can have a steady supply. Because the problem right now is if they don't have a steady supply of what they need, then they go right back to importing food. Right. Is the locally grown produce healthier? Does it last longer? It uh, Absolutely. And I'd encourage everybody to go to the farmer's market. That's uh, the next place food. I was going. Okay. Yeah. Uh, because absolutely, uh, you're yeah. absolutely correct. Now, people say it costs too much. But how many people have thrown a le- head of lettuce away in their refrigerator that they bought at a grocery store because it went bad before they consumed it? You buy, you buy that bib lettuce at a local market, you know it's a lot fresher, it's going to last longer. You probably ended up saving money. Right. Do we have training centers for farmers? If, if we're going to uh, move forward with this $800 million uh, potential, or well, that, that's the base to that's grow the base. from there, do we have help for farmers? Uh, we absolutely do have help for farmers. Uh, we have uh, training on good agricultural practices to make sure that the f- that the vegetables are handled uh, properly. Uh, you can go to my website uh, at West Virginia Department of Agriculture, and you can find the 
uh, some of these things. But we're rebuilding. You know, I've only been in office about right. 100 days right Correct. now. Right. And we're rebuilding some of these things. And hopefully over time we'll have more information out there on social media and on the website uh, to, to make folks aware of it. There's going to be an urban ag conference in Charleston this Saturday uh, that I'll be uh, attending. Uh, that's going to be there's going to be some training and lectures. Uh, we did a, a small farms conference in Charleston, with, in addition with a winter's blues market uh, this past winter. Uh, there were some great lecturers and training going on then, and vendors there that can show you some of their new technologies. Mm -hmm. So the information's out there. What my challenge is is to try to bring the information together and make it readily accessible to the uh, citizens and those folks that want to farm. And, uh, again, website is agriculture.wv.gov. Does that sound right? That sounds right. We've been talking with West Virginia Commissioner of Agriculture, Kent Leonard, and I still have a lot more questions, but we're out of time.